Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the first thing I, I just want to point out, it, it's always easy to, easy to talk about Boeing, but behind Boeing is a supply chain where very small manufacturers, very small businesses are also benefited um, kind of long term, and those, those folks are deeply concerned about what's happening right now with the XM Bank. In fact, most of the push that I get in North Dakota is coming from our very small businesses, whether it's a wheelchair manufacturer who said, look, I've maximized my effect in the market today. I need to have access to the international market. I don't know how to do it. And you say, we've got this great tool. Um, I, th I think there's no question that small business is a huge benef uh, beneficiary. Now, in proportion to their position in terms of the, their contribution to gross domestic product, they might even be in excess of what you might see compared to multinational corporations. So let's, let's take a couple things off the table. And one of those is that there is somehow uh, companies that have been disadvantaged who are pounding the table. In fact, in, in, uh, in uh, the testimony of one of the panelists raises the issue of a couple companies, both of which who are outrageous supporters of the XM Bank. And so what, what we really have here is a philosophical difference. And we're hearing from people who represent an ideology that is free enterprise above all else, no interference at all of government, and we're hearing from people who actually create jobs. And the question is, are we gonna to listen to the ideology of you know, get rid of all subsidies, which in a perfect world might make sense when we're not operating in a global economy where we have institutions exactly like this pouring money into their export um, credit agencies. And, and so we are not in a perfect world. And so to me today, what we need to do is we need to have a conversation with the people who are actually on the ground with American manufacturing. And, and uh, Ms. Dempsey, I wanna, wanna ask you um, about our current state of affairs, which is we're looking like we are going to, for the first time in 70 years, let the charter of the bank expire, expire this year. That's outrageous to me. And I want you to tell me what the injury is to American manufacturers if we do that. Thank you, Senator, and, and I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, today starts the NAM uh, Manufacturing Summit, and we have over 500 people who have flown in, and they're going to be talking to your offices and others about the Export-Import Bank and how critical it is. This is an issue where my phone rings off, you know, uh, the, the system because this not is the, just calls from Boeing just no <laughs> this is from small businesses this is emails from small businesses about whether they're going to be able to continue to get you know assurances that they're going to get paid when they send their product overseas that they're going to have the working capital so that they can play their pay their employees and export at the same time something that commercial banks don't are, provide are, are they recounting to you the disruption that is happening now as a result of this uncertainty as a result of us not doing our job in a timely uh, fashion. Th there, there's a lot of harsh words and there's a lot of uncertainty and fear. One of the things we see is foreign competitors to our companies here in the United States using the fact that Export Import Bank may shut down at the end of this month to tell foreign customers, hey, you can't trust the Americans. You can't necessarily be guaranteed that they're going to come through on this sale. And there's been a lot of uncertainty for big sales but small sales. This will cost U.S. exports. They're, they're Make no mistake, and the jobs that they support. It, it currently, the last time I checked, there's $18 billion in the pipeline that will be stalled out if we don't do this. And, and so while we're arguing philosophically, the people you represent are trying to keep people working. They're trying to keep their product moving into a market where 95% of all consumers live outside this country. I want to ask Mr. Murphy, when, when you try and explain the, um, the resistance to uh, uh, an entity that returns money to the Treasury, that actually supports American jobs, um, what, what argument do you provide for why we're stalling out? Well, it's difficult to be able to explain that. I think particularly with the small business users of the bank, they're baffled by it. Um, I think that there are a very handful of three or four companies that have been identified across the country um, that do not support the Export-Import Bank that have spoken out against it, including Delta, for instance. Yeah. But uh, I, I work for the broadest business organization in the country, an underlying membership of three million companies of every size, sector, and region. It, it, I, can't, I can't tell you how, um, how broad the support is for this yeah. and how difficult it is to explain what's going on. I, I think that's a point that we need to make, which is that this isn't a, a, a 
5149 in your membership. This is hugely supported compared to everything it is else. Completely and, uncontroversial. Yeah, and, and I guess I just want to make one final pitch, which is we have got to reauthorize the XM Bank before the end of the year or before the end of this month, or else we have created a huge disruption. We have done something again in this body and, and in this Congress that is so disruptive to the marketplace that it is unfathomable that we would risk these jobs. And so I want to thank you for your testimony. Senator, if I could just say briefly, thank you to you, Senator Donnelly, Senator Kirk, for your leadership and on a bill to reauthorize the bank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a, a couple points, because I think it's important that we kind of understand the reforms that are in the in the provisions that are in the Kirk Heitkamp bill. Um, but I do want to make the point following up on uh, Senator Round's point. You know, it's, it's always a little difficult for me when somebody comes with the argument, look how insignificant it is in the real world, 2%, and then says, but it is catastrophic to the free enterprise system. You know, those are just two really inconsistent notions and, and not particularly persuasive. But I want to I want to run through um, uh, some of the some of the concerns that uh, Senator Warren uh, uh, expressed. The the Kirk Heitkamp bill actually does raise the target for small business from 20 percent to 25 percent and requires reporting. And we say target, and we understand that the more we can tell uh, potential manufacturers and potential exporters about the resource so that they can, in fact, increase their exports. And there's thousands of stories about, you know, the pickle lady who doubled her order of pickles because she all, all of a sudden found out that um, she could finance it through the XM Bank. And so, so we've got some great small business stories. I think we can build on those if we really make a concerted effort. And I list, look forward to hearing from Mr. Hochberg. But as we as we look at um, kind of uh, taxpayer protection and making sure, as as uh, Senator Corker talked about, eliminating or at least reducing the amount of exposure, there's a number of provisions in the uh, Kirk Heitkamp bill that basically uh, allow for some restrictions, some backstops, and, and the one I'm particularly interested in, which is a pilot program for reinsurance, so that, that in fact the, um, the taxpayers aren't, aren't backstopping at all, that we're actually looking in the private market for, for reinsurance. And so I, I, I guess my question is to uh, Ms. Dempsey and Mr. Murphy, at this point, You've been fairly supportive of the Kirk Heitkamp bill. Can you um, reinforce that today, that we, we are looking at a reform package? It yes. may not be things that you agree with, but you understand everything's a compromise and that you are, in fact, supporting these compromises. The NAM strongly supports moving forward with the long-term ex export-import um, reauthorization, and, and the bill that, that you and Senator Kirk have introduced is, is going to do that, is going to keep the Exim bag functioning at an at a important level that is going to grow manufacturing in the United States. Mr. Murphy. Similarly here, we've been pleased to express our support for the bill. There are a number of common sense reforms included in it relating to uh, closer audit scrutiny and stronger supervision, a stronger board that we think make a lot of sense going forward. Uh, my comment earlier to Senator Warren, which was perhaps not captured fully, was um, I simply do not have, on behalf of the Chamber's membership, um, a, a compilation of pleas for support from small business to the XM Bank that have gone unanswered. Uh, my point is simply that the XM Bank has actually done a pretty good job in terms of outreach there and, and receiving those. But by all means, we, we appreciate the, the bill's contribution to, to moving forward, including in its outreach to small business. And, and we can continue and build on that outreach. And I think we'll meet these targets if we make a concerted effort, whether it's the manufacturers or the chambers, if we're able to get reauthorization. Um, I just want to reiterate a point, you know, nothing like repetition in terms of communication. We are on track right now to allowing the charter of the XM Bank to expire. And the disruption that we have, whether that's a short term or long term, there's obviously people here in the Congress who want to put a stake through the heart of the XM Bank. Um, and, and I understand the other panelists, you know, the sky is not on, you know, that, that, that the sky won't fall tomorrow if that happens. But there's $18 billion of potential export investment 
that will go unanswered if we allow this to, to continue. And so just want to put in a plug for getting something done in June, getting something done long term. Uh, we'll live to fight this. Let's go with these reforms, see if they address some of the concerns, and just want to reiterate my support for my bill. Thank surprise, surprise. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. 